Welcome to Mom Matters. I'm your host, Alyssa DeVere, and in the next 10 easy-to-watch minutes, we're going to give you practical ideas for more productive parenting. Tonight's topic is Not So Happy Childhood, and we're going to be talking about how to know and deal with childhood depression. Joining us tonight is Julie Totten. Julie is the founder of the nonprofit organization called Families for Depression Awareness. She's the mom of two children ages four and a half and eleven, and we're really happy you're here tonight, Julie. Thank you for coming. Thank you. This is a tough topic, and I would like to just understand how you kind of got involved with it. Yes, well, I lost my brother Mark to suicide uh, 16 years ago, and I did try to help him before he died, um, but I didn't know what was wrong with him. And after he died, I kind of snuck into the library and read books about why people take their lives. Mm -hmm. And I learned about depression, and I saw that my brother had all the symptoms of depression. And of course, I was devastated because I felt like I could have saved him. Um, and so I realized at the same time that my father had all these symptoms of depression. And um, then I helped my father get diagnosed with depression within six months of having lost my brother. Uh, so I saw the good part of um, someone getting well, um, which my father has been well, but I suffered the tragedy of my brother, and I felt like there were a lot of families out there, like myself, uh, family members who are left carrying the ball that need help and support, so that's why I started Families for Depression Awareness. Well, that's a terrific cause, and good for you for doing it. Explain to me the, the fundamental difference between somebody who's depressed versus somebody who may just be temporarily sad. Right. Well, uh, with depression, there's some criteria that doctors have. Um, the first is that uh, you have to be suffering for at least two weeks, and usually mm -hmm. it goes on much longer than that, with uh, both a depressed, irritable, down mood. In children, it's often irritability rather than sadness. And mm -hmm. secondly, you need to feel that you've lost interest or pleasure in doing things, or maybe you're withdrawing from friends and family. Um, and on a third um, criteria, which you don't have to have, but is a definite um, indication is that if someone feels suicidal mm -hmm. or makes a suicide attempt, that's a clear indication that they probably have depression or bipolar disorder. Okay, so what are the types of signs? You said irritability, for example, in a child. So. Describe a little bit about the behavior that would trigger, you know. Yeah, so in children, um, you know, you probably see a pattern over time where your child is feeling getting worse. Um, maybe they're chronically worse, or maybe they're fine for a while and they're worse for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And um, so you would notice things like they have a depressed mood or an irritable mood. They're, maybe they have a drop in grades because it's difficult for them to concentrate. Um, they may be acting out, or they may just be kind of withdrawn. Um, you might see things like a drug and alcohol abuse often goes along with depression. Um, certainly there's other symptoms that you may see, like sleeping too much or too little, um, eating too much or eating too little. So um, some of these dramatic changes in their norm, what's the normal behavior for them? Right. And children of all ages, um, as young yes. as, and well, you t the typical onset for depression is age 13 or 14 years old, okay. which is young. Yeah. Um, when I started Families for Depression Awareness, I was told the onset was 21 years old. So it's just recently, in the last couple of years, that we realized, no, the onset is young, and that's why it's so important to catch people when they're young okay. and get them treated. And give me an idea, how common is this in children? Well, it's the same incidence in 13 to 14 years and older. It's the same incidence as in adults, about 10% of, of um, young people. But in younger children, it's much lower. Okay, great. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the ways to not only identify this, if we, as we talked about, but what do you do once you, talk, once you figure out your child's depressed and the kinds of treatments available. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Alyssa DeVere, the host from Mom Matters. I wanted to tell you about this really excellent resource for parents. It's called Parents for Parents Magazine, and it's really unique for two reasons. First, it's the only magazine I know of that focuses on one parenting topic per issue. So it gets really deep in the topics, and all the articles are written for parents by parents. I highly recommend it. Check it out at www.parentsforparentsmag.com. 
Welcome back. We're here with Julie Totten talking about childhood depression. Julie, you gave some symptoms like not eating or eating too much, not sleeping, sleeping too much of children. As a parent, I mean, you're moving so fast, and sometimes kids act weird in that respect. So when do you all of a sudden go, ooh, I've got to do something? What's that trigger point? Yeah, well, I think you should trust your judgment as a parent if your child is really doing a lot worse and you're noticing it. Um, it's a good idea just to get an evaluation for your child. It doesn't mean that you have to do anything, but to take your child into the pediatrician or to a mental health clinician and just say, you know, things aren't going well, or be very specific about the behaviors and get a medical opinion. Okay, so bring them to it's your pediatrician, like you said, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. What kinds of treatments can parents expect? Well, if they are diagnosed with depression, um, there could, could be psychotherapy, which is talk therapy, and that's used a lot with children, where they're just talking um, about issues that could be bothering them. And then secondly, um, there's medication, mm -hmm. um, typically antidepressants. You hear a lot of controversy about antidepressants, particularly in teenagers. Any particular issues that we should be aware of when you know, a doctor comes and says, I'm gonna give your kid antidepressants, any things that you wanna bring up? Right, well, if your child is taking medication, you really wanna ask the doctor about the risks and the benefits because if they're recommending it, it's, they're, they're saying that the benefits are wor worth the risks. Mm -hmm. um, and the risks are that the child could get worse if they react badly to the medication. Mm -hmm. wow. And so you need to monitor them very closely. Um, and if there are any side effects or if they worsen at all, you know, you definitely contact the clinician right away. But we don't want to scare people away. There has been controversy about antidepressants. Um, they're very useful to a lot of children. They're life-saving for a lot of children. So but you do have to monitor it very closely. Okay, great. Well, I know we could talk about some, some of this, the detail level of this for long, way beyond what we have on the show. So I want you to tell people about your website and some of the resources that are there. Well, right. Well, speaking about um, monitoring your child if they have depression, we have um, two guides called the Depression and Bipolar Wellness Guides, which we've tested with families um, across the country. You can get them for free on our website as PDF files. Um, familyaware.org and we also have a lot of other resources on our website um, including family profiles which are pictures and interviews with families and the symptoms resources uh, where to get a lot of information oh, great. so familyaware.org is where familyaware.org and we'll be sure to put that on our website as well okay. I want to thank you for joining us today it is a uh, Unfortunately, a fascinating topic that I think every parent should be aware of um, so that they can really identify any potential issue with their children and obviously mm -hmm. with fellow adults around them. So thank you for being here today, well, thank Julie. You. I want to thank you for joining us and welcome you to our website, which is www.mom-matters.com. There you can find all our previous shows as well as information about our upcoming shows. This is Alyssa DeVere for Mom Matters, where we're giving you practical ideas for more productive parenting.